Basically, the recipe for scouts is like a film about what was it about the major events and like the major things that has been going on for the, that made Liverpool what it is now. For the past few weeks, we've been doing filming. But for the past few weeks, we've been doing filming about, um, like for example, like the sports, the sports part, the docks, the waterfronts, about the giant girl. Basically, all those that we've been filming about and. We've also had some dress-up scenes, didn't we? Because last Thursday, last week, a few of us did some dress-ups where we had to dress up as pirates. <laughs> <laughs> it was jolly good fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's just an example. Obviously, Wrestling Scouts, the guys meet every Thursday from 4 to 6 because we offer extra activities for the young people. 
Um, we provide any access support for any young person to take part in our projects. So we will provide transport or uh, sign language interpreters or PAs if they require them. We would never turn a young person away uh, for any reason. Um, we would try to put any access support we could possible in to obviously help any young person come to one of our projects. Um, it's been great, obviously we came to Hope and um, said could we do a project to look at what benefits uh, young uh, people got from attending our projects. Because um, we, we knew obviously we kept them going or um, obviously our projects benefit young people by giving them more self-confidence, more self-belief, they also gain skills in arts and we do accreditations. But it's, it was trying to look at a way which was um, best to obviously capture all those thoughts about obviously young Dada. Um, just as well to obviously flag up that um, we have a celebration event every year called Young Dada Fest and it was because the young people wanted their own kind of festival event so they asked us to do that uh, about 10 years ago and we put one in place and had one that's happened every year. So that's happening in July. and. So I think everyone actually here is actually involved in Young Dada Fest in some way this year. Um, and again, the young people's group do everything for that. They do the call out for the acts, they choose the acts, they uh, market it, um, they do backstage, they perform. Um, so that's a really big event where I can have like hundreds of young people on stage, obviously performing and taking part. So um, obviously if anyone wants to come along to that as well, you're welcome to come along. It's at the Edinburgh Theatre this year on the 17th of July. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Okay, as a visual representation of some of the work Young Dada do, uh, we'd like to share with you just a short snapshot from a, a Young Dada film entitled Blueprints of Change. Uh, the video explores from the young people's perspective the barriers that they face in attending youth projects. Um, the film was devised, filmed, edited and narrated by the young people themselves and includes some interviews with their peers. Uh, the young people have received training in filmmaking skills throughout the project and the film was distributed to other organisations as a way to encourage them to change uh, their policies and practices. Put those papers down. Throw out those statistics and allow us to open your eyes. You're in the dark? Don't worry. We'll give you some ideas. Best of our young disabled filmmakers. want the chance to take part in activities outside of school that will allow them to learn new skills, make friends and above all, have fun. But for many young disabled people, the opportunity isn't always available to them. During the course of this film, we'll be talking to those in the know, discovering the difficulties that can arise and the ways in which a young disabled person can be more easily involved in the after school activity of their choice. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do with Dada like? And um, what we do at um, Dada is like we do like um, theatre, uh, like acting and uh, drama. And we're in that room there, and we do like you know how to make how to make a job about like pe with people. Yeah, and I mean doing and drama, and um, is it so simple? And we've just been um, passing things about smell and all that, and things about heavy. What activities have you been involved in outside of school? Um, I've done the dance, singing, basketball, and athletics. I like could be involved in the dance fest, and volunteering for dance. I'm also involved in outside. School is football team. I've been involved in football and the Dada. Uh, we can do activities in the Dada. Yeah, so I do it brilliant. Be good. What things made it easier to do these activities? 
I had to go to taxi, but I'm in, in the taxi again on the way home. Um, it's free. <laughs> and, um, I, mean, I, I just like cars. What is the transport and the sport? Within their involvement in any given activity, disabled young people can face barriers. Barriers that may, if not handled with care and sensitivity, stop them from pursuing their chosen activity. These can include issues surrounding physical access, transportation and support, amongst others. Cars do, do they will play out on that and because um, cars and mums don't like the play out and that's so because it's dangerous to play out because anyone might bully yes, say um, that you're disabled and that but I don't want that. And how hard do you think it is for disabled young people to do activities after school? I would say it might, it would be a little bit difficult for some how it starts, but where he's been it, where he's done it before, this sort of stuff before, yeah, they know how to do it and then they help each other. I I think it's very hard because 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 there's not that much out there for them. Probably it's quite hard for them because they some of them don't get the transport. The main problems is um, communication and stuff. It is difficult, like, yeah. Um, I mean, not, not many people would take the disability kids on and on. Sometimes it's hard to taxi because it's the boats and the, um, the ramps. They have these because it helps the mum trying to get involved now and uh, the young people got special need to get need to get involved with with the clubs outside of school and that's that. We found that there aren't many opportunities to become involved in inclusive projects with non-disabled people, but many people we interviewed reacted positively to the suggestion and expressed the wish to do so. Tell us if you like to get involved in projects with non-disabled young people. I suppose it's good to mix with every, all different kinds of people. And that you to like all the other children, so... Yeah, really, because then for the disabled people to and do was very helpful. Well, I don't really know because I am a bit nervous just in case they might make fun of me or tease me or something because of the way I talk or the way I act or something like that. Yeah, that would be nice, a nice experience for me. What activities would you like to do that you don't get the chance to do at the moment? Basketball. Maybe some art ones, I think, this time. So. Just music. Well, I do a little bit of music, but I love music, yeah. Um, football. No, I don't get, I don't, I don't get, I don't get enough, enough, enough opportunity. I don't think that. Yeah. The only barrier to a young disabled person's involvement in activities should be their imagination. Whether they want to act, play an instrument or play a game of football, they should be able to. As we've seen, it only takes small considerations such as providing transport and other support to open up a world of possibility for young disabled people and to allow them to set the world on fire. important. As touched upon briefly, research around disability often excludes the voice of people with impairment. And when the voices of people with impairment are included, they're often just slotted in to fit a predetermined theme or area. Participatory research seeks to address this tension by enabling work that allows co-researchers to initiate, determine and evolve the focus of the project. Applying Rosemary Garland Thompson's work on disability gains to research, 
There are significant gains for the ways in which research can be imagined when you give up the need, for uh, need to control what might happen. In this participatory writers' project, we planned that the young people might want to talk, write and draw. But what happens when the people want to sing? The project was a participatory evaluation project designed to enable us as students to work with young Dada to design the process for evaluating their work. Participation was a central concern from the outset, but there were still tensions in the extent to which the structure was predetermined. Can I invite Dr. Penko to speak briefly about the tensions faced as project coordinator? I like the fact that Louisa sort of speak briefly. <laughs> <laughs> she knows me, doesn't she, Laura? Yes, she does. Speak briefly. I'm just never doing Don't talk briefly. Um, yes, my bit was really to talk about the fact that um, in uh, trying to envisage a participatory approach, that I was very much concerned um, with a control uh, in terms of trying to organise four workshops, making sure that that all ran very smoothly. So this was my list of considerations. So the initial proposal emphasised the role of Young Dada in decision making. From the outset, but before Young Dada came through the door, it was still all about me. I must have a timetable, I must know how the workshop will run, I must know timings and places, I must think what will happen in the workshop, I must reassure students, facilitators, and inform them how to run the groups, uh, I must anticipate all the responses that there were going to be, I must limit discussion, I must move people on to the next stage if they're spending too long discussing certain things that I don't think maybe they should be discussing, I must create a structure I must buy lots of salt and vinegar crisps, that was a regular request. I must know what is going to happen next, and that sense I must be in control. And uh, I've just put, I've, I've not given you um, an example of my planning and timings, but I did have a timetable which said something like, 4 o'clock, come through the door, 4.02, distribute uh, soft drinks, 4.07, ensure the drinks have been drunk. That sort of thing. You can imagine thinking about needing to negotiate and think about the different aspects of the project to ensure that it all went well, to ensure that it went successful. And just going back to the thing uh, that, that Sophie finished with, this idea of it, what happens when people want to sing, is this idea actually that just that came from the young people, from the participation, and it's something that wouldn't have been anticipated. Uh, so we were interested in this idea of participation as a way of opening up, as a way of creating potential, uh, rather than closing down possibilities. Um, and I'm interested in how that works you know, in pedagogy and uh, teaching and learning as well. But I'll, I'll shut up because you said briefly. <laughs> so, what did we actually do? The project ran over four twilight seminar sessions. The young people's main objectives were to think about what evaluation is, what questions they wanted to ask, who they were going to ask, and in what ways they could find these out. The first two workshops focused on designing tools for finding out, designing a questionnaire and a toolkit with an idea of what the uh, young Dada were going to go away and use it with their other members. An example of the toolkit can now be seen on the PowerPoint presentation behind me. I'll just briefly explain what you can see. So this was kind of a way of giving them different ideas of how, uh, how they could get their ideas across through it. There's the first bit is a bit of a spider diagram, so with a big bubble in the middle, it's asking what young Dada is. And then they've got an option to write or draw, um, and there's some uh, questions, multiple choice <coughs> questions. And then again, there's some more questions that just require brief answers, and there's some pictures, and then there's a big space to do whatever you like, because we found a lot of the people just preferred to draw rather than write themselves. Uh, in the final two workshops, Young Dada decided on the ways they'd like to present their ideas. They'd seen posters that we and our peers have produced as part of our final year assessment, and one group of the co-researchers decided they wanted to produce a poster as well. All the co-researchers decided that a film would be a useful way of documenting their ideas. Here is the final cut of that film.
They came up with ideas on how we can find out this information and create the questionnaire and toolkit. This allows them to evaluate the on start -up programming and to feed into future programs and events. A group of 17 people who have participated in Young Brother attended all workshops that planned and designed ways of collecting information about the people's experience of Young Brother and to think about ways that their ideas could be presented. So, work with a group of students from the university and collected their ideas about what from both Young Brother. They also talked about areas that could be improved. That could be improved. Questionnaire and we'll find out about the spirit of the sound of Young Dada. So, what do you do at Young Dada? Before, I would do a range of different workshops. You do programs mm -hmm. and activities and activities. Young Dada has changed me into a confident person that loves to express his ideas. But mostly Young Dada has changed me thanks to all the staff and friends. With Dada's help, I've begun on my journey to allow myself to be exactly who I want to be. I took a chance and they took a leap of faith in me. With the freedom and support I was given, I was able to unlock my talents and increasing confidence as my own and their hard work was rewarded. Dada Fest has provided me with all kinds of unique opportunities. I'm in a much better position now than I thought I'd be a year ago. Without Dada Fest and Young Dada, I don't think I'll be where I am now. How have you found Dada interesting or describe it in two words?
Um, some of the main findings from the evaluation were that friendship obviously played a central role in terms of what the young people gained from young Dada. Um, fun, they said it was fun, 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 fun. Um, there was self-reported increases in confidence and agency um, and it helped them with the skills building, so writing skills, um, disability equality, leadership, self-advocacy and communication um, were all discussed in the evaluation. Um, what were the young people changed? Well, as we saw in the video, that, that was a resounding nothing. Um, and we felt that whilst on face value that reflects a, you know, a positive evaluation, um, the toolkit did reveal some aspects that could be developed. Um, these included just venue variation and different options, access to transport and more activities. What this project did was to enable a reflection as to how researchers can maintain a degree of responsibility without control. How can research agendas in the future involve the voices of young people not only in commenting on pre-designed questions and concerns, but in creating blueprints for change? To summarise, if we simply take a group of individuals and do this type of research to them, we will miss the individual in particular. In measuring what works best in preconceived, preconceived solutions, we will miss the potential for a different song. We will miss the solutions to questions we haven't even thought of. Thank you. Yeah, go on then, Laura. <laughs> um, well, I'd just like to ask the three remaining people if the, you felt there was anything that was missed out of that, but in terms of the evaluation of Dada. And was that your theatrical voice we heard? <laughs> Like a few people said, there wasn't much improvements. They don't, they, we didn't need, there was nothing that needs improving. Only the minor issues, only the minor issues, as Sam would like to say, minor issues. <laughs> <laughs> as like Sam would like to say. And the fact is, it was a, and the fact is, it was a pleasure working with the others. Yeah. Maybe you'd like to add to that? Don't be shy, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the so, spot. Just, so long, you just imagine that none of them are here. Yeah. Don't worry, you've got Chris here. He can be company. Go <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Go on, Chris. Oh, um, Dara's gives you a good experience and more confidence, and that's it, really. How long have you been going? Uh, for six years. Really? I've been going for two. Two? Two years I've been going. I've had like I've been here for a like How that. long have you done it? Uh, I really enjoyed data because you get to meet no threats and, and it uh, makes you be as well. Uh -huh. really? And during the evaluation, Claire have got a <laughs> problem for me. <laughs> yes. At one time, right, at one time, right, preparing the other it, I call her old. I said, <laughs> I said, Can we just make sure we're not recording? No, we are. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just aiming in on your wrinkles now. Right hair on my head when I started this project. So and um, look what I did to her. <laughs> and now Claire will explain what I've been doing to her of the battle. She was a blonde when it started. <laughs> yeah. No, one particular, obviously, um, Jordan Standup. Yeah. Yeah. He's quite a big guy. 
And, uh, and I've done go, do my usual thing, go through the register, who's here, who's here, Jordan, and I turn round to meet sort of his chest, and, yes. at which point I did shriek. Yeah, it was um, one, of those, one of those moments. I said to her, I was like a Roman. He said he was Roman. Yeah. Very awesome. Well, I know, because you kept talking about having to, well, to execute me, which was a bit rude. <laughs> no, not the old-fashioned way. I said execute him with balls. Yeah. <laughs> a bit nicer. Yes. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't even hear the question. I'm just stuck up for no reason. I don't know if you've got any more questions. Yes, thank you, Laura. Any more questions? <coughs> no? Is there one other question? Um, um, Jade. Hi, my name's Jade. I'm going to be starting um, a project in September. And I know evaluation is a really important part of any project. One thing that worries me about it is I think a lot of people find it quite boring. <laughs> and it's not the most exciting bit of the project. Do you have any tips on to make it more interesting? You guys seem to really enjoy... Well, the evaluation, if you're going to do an evaluation for your project, make, do, add some of bits of the evaluation that could be like interesting to the people who like your life, what do you like doing, or if you, what project, or what would you do with this project, or is anything you like to add to it? Make the evaluation like more interesting to, to you think should we will be interested in this project? Try and make the evaluation more in more interested for the people who want to do do, do the project. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because um, you know we were because we were working with young Dada, we were really keen to want to have different ways that uh, young people wanted to work, so that they would maybe do poems or uh, maybe do some drawings. But the whole that was the the whole point was it was a real uh, turning point for me when the, when the young people said actually we're going to write a song. And started, and not only that, that it was really spontaneous in the session, and they were, I mean, that was a, a filmed, rehearsed version, but literally there was a very spontaneous, you know, and sort of the beat was going on the table, and they were all sort of, you know, getting into writing the song and thinking about it. And I think that's just trying to um, have some openness um, with the participants in, in whatever project, thinking actually, what are the things that you want to be able to comment about? And I think that's a way of maybe trying to. Um, be more productive in terms of evaluation rather than asking sort of standard Yeah, I feel like previous questions. projects I've work, worked on, evaluations can kind of be much more geared towards the researcher and not necessarily for the participants and yes. people actually doing the project, hence why it becomes a fairly dull process for them. So it's really interesting to see, you know, things like singing, drawing, because actually far more interesting for the researcher as well. I, I think... Um, I know Sam had made this point to me actually when, when you look on the film, uh, what was really important there was that people were able to respond just in the ways that they wanted to. And one of the first things in terms of the evaluation sessions, we were all in one room and it was actually quite noisy. So one of the things for the next session people said, could we have a different room? So some people were out maybe writing a bit of a script, do a role play, some people were doing the song, but somebody else maybe just wanted to sit really quietly. Uh, and make a, a really a beautiful drawing, um, and it was that just being open to, to different ways that people could respond, really. Yeah, it's, it's kind of just, as Claire said, being really kind of open to, um, and be prepared that it could be anything. Um, just don't try to make it too close to your evaluation. Like when we're doing sometimes evaluation within groups, if we're doing a theatre project or you get them to stand in different types of places in the room for um, things they like and they don't like. Um, so it's just obviously say being very kind of open of where you're going to do it, think about different ways that they can physically go and stand somewhere or they can draw or they can speak or they can sing um, and just as many different kind of varieties um, for the young people, obviously the old people doing evaluation as possible. Thank you. Thank you Jade. Any more questions? It's Ria, David. Um, I wanted to ask the students who are involved in the project kind of what attracted them to doing it and what they thought they got out to it. Uh, I think like we said at the beginning, when uh, as you get into the course and you you look further into um, some of the philosophies and principles, principles, especially around issues of voice, and you do read journals and articles and you do start asking questions like whose voice is involved and even when they're involved whose voice is still privileged when they're writing up in the discussions and stuff 
I think it was just the chance to take part in a piece of research that resonated with those philosophies and principles from the course and also our own that we'd you know grown and developed over the period of the three years and I think that was that was that was the main point for me especially was to be involved in a piece of research that really actively sought to to, to get the voices of the people who were directly affected by by the, out, the outcomes of it so that was that was mine. It was just nice to do a piece of research that was a little bit different you know that followed a different outline and we didn't really know what to expect going into the first session and you know, we all met with Claire beforehand and we had this plan that we all tried to stick to and actually it went out the window pretty quickly but that was the fun part of it it was so spontaneous it was, it was good fun wasn't it? Thanks for you. Any more? Let me say no. Kath. Kath. Um, it's, I get the impression from the presentation that the research really empowered the individual and was individual central. Was that due to them having this slot of time where they could express how they felt about young daughter or was this helpful in that way? It was, a, it was helpful in the way that so that we know what we need to, to do, do research about. We all we all gathered around one the, on one of the sessions and we said what we should do to showcase our ideas. Some of us did posters, some of us did a song, and um, I and a few others did a PowerPoint, which didn't which it went well where, according, until the last slide. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before you ask, the, the funny thing was, another, staff, another person who was, uh, who's not here is Ollie, did a little funny thing, I'll tell you. He put a picture of Jack's face with a heart on it. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? We're going to save it on and put it on there. <laughs> no, it, but serious, the, it was fun to do research. It did help us in the way of what to put the research all together. And by the end of the day, we were all proud of our research. I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kat. Any more? Okay. Okay, we'll go. Um, did you meet up to do this after you have done some other young Dada activities? Like, did you do some art activities and then come to this meeting to talk about it? Or was it separate? Did you have to just come to this? Well... When I first started Dada, I believe it or not, it was with a film I started with. Back in our old school, around 2012 to 13, we did a film called School Again, with a few of my old friends from college. But that's good, college, school. I'm, I'm getting too old for some reason. And um, we st it took us a few weeks to do the film. But then after that, I was immediately, I started going to the meetings. And I've been with Dada ever since. Now let's see, how are you? Where did you first start it? I first started uh, singing with the uh, people in my school. Um, about, they told me that I was going to Gaia first to sing there. So, so that's the, I first started there and then I got involved with different kind of things that they do there. So. <laughs> and <then I> <laughs> uh, um, when did you first start? I started on February, I think it was, so it was that long ago. <laughs> and yeah, that's how it is. Before I was asked, I used to do uh, martial arts, and uh, our school mentor asked me if I wanted to join. So I said, uh, yeah. And then now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the young, these young people chose to come and do the evaluation project. It was the, the two hours was just to come here and do the evaluation project. Um, and then they might have done other done young data projects and other different, other different days. So yeah. So the sole purpose of them coming to Hope was to do, spend the two hour workshop doing the actual evaluation project. And they signed up to do that. So. Thank you. Thanks, Kathleen. Yeah. Um, we work with 12 year olds to 26 year olds. Um, we've got some just out either side. Um, um, and, the, and the main place where the Dada takes place is Luca Chambers in town. 
You know what the blue, you know what the blue car built school is? Yeah. By where pre-market next is. Well, that is where the Dada is based in. And so some first as most Thursdays when we do meetings we go straight to the blue coat to to organise or to do, sort sort out what activities we're gonna be doing over the next few weeks. Yeah, so as Jordan said our office is based in the blue coat so we do do a lot but we do um, projects in all different venue arts venues across Merseyside and we uh, work with young people um, and partners from across Merseyside as well. So we have got young people from Nova Lee Sefton um, and um, we're all 12, there's also young people from Liverpool, a majority of young people are from Liverpool. How, how would you get involved? Um, when we're obviously organising the project, we usually do like a call out. We do like, we do like a call out and you, you could do the call out by either email or ringing or like ringing them to let them know you for further information. But you have to do it in a certain deadline. If you don't, because a certain deadline, like with our events, with our young dad event, we did call outs for like acts. Recently, they did a call out, and after that, they did a call out for three groups to do like for acting, singing, and other. The recent one that they just called out, which is not done until next Monday, which I've applied for, which you saw, is compares, which is for presenters, because presenters. So, if you want to be interested, you do like you have to do like a certain thing if you want to do it, like apply for it. But you have to do it before a certain deadline, otherwise you can't do it. But if you get picked, you're gonna love the events when you do it. <laughs> yeah. So we, as Jordan said, we advertise on the website through social media, um, and we work very closely with the part, our partner SEM schools um, and the colleges and universities to advertise, um, and also with other kind of. Um, agencies that work with um, disabled young people. Um, so we do obviously have to far and wide um, for participants to take part in our project, um, our projects, and then um, again for young people to take part in our leadership group as well. So is it maybe sort of even in the weekend? Yes, um, we tend to do most of our projects after school or um, weekends. Um, sometimes we do also do projects in school hours, but it's mainly extracurricular activities. And on some occasions, if you in um, my institute, they do on half terms as well, because they finish a week before everyone else in my college. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. One more. Um, can I just say sorry? This yeah. Sam needs to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. Now. <laughs> you I've, got, next time? I've got to go because we've got a dance workshop running at four o'clock. So I've got to get back into town to oh, supervise the dance thank workshop. You. So I just want to say thanks, guys, um, and Anne's going to make sure you get in your taxis. Maybe this is the time to please don't make it late, please. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>